Good morning. It is March 31st, 2024. This is episode 123, 123 of the Paul Green Comedy Podcast, a podcast by a dreamer for dreamers, stand-up comedian, improviser, and actor. Paul Green coming to you, documenting my journey and all of the things that I'm learning along the way, trying to pursue a big audacious goal, a big dream in my life. And had a remarkably non-eventful day yesterday, (laughs) which I think is good. I think sometimes it's just good to just have a day of kind of like, because I am always going, 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 going. And uh, yesterday I did very little. I Except I did clean my room, which I am not very good at keeping a clean room and usually how I operate is my room will just get to a state of disorder to where I look at it and I just cannot believe that the human being who occupies myself is responsible for living in such a space and so then I just do a big old massive cleanup and so that's what I did yesterday so now my room is looking very nice and it will look very nice for about two days uh (laughs) Reminds me of this old Simpsons episode where I don't remember any context. I just remember the joke, and the joke is the family had cleaned all of the house, and of course Marge had to, like, just go bonkers to get, you know, her family and the kids and Homer to actually clean the house. And then after the house is sparkling clean, all of the family are just sitting on the couch and they're all just kind of relaxing and they're just totally worn out after just this long, arduous day of cleaning. And then uh, I think Homer, one of the kids, goes into the kitchen and has one of those like swinging doors. And so they push open the swinging door and you see the kitchen all pristine and sparkling and then it swings back the other other way. And it's just a complete and total mess. So it took one swing of the kitchen door for the entire house just to completely revert revert back to absolute sheer chaos. And I'm sure uh, any of you uh, out there with large families uh, can probably appreciate that, or even me as just a, uh, you know, bachelor who isn't the best at uh, keeping his room up. But I never let it go too bad for too long. I do finally start to go, okay, Paul. Come on. Hey, but according to Jordan Peterson, you know, me cleaning my room is like how I'm going to like stop World War Three or something like that. Um, that's an extreme view. I am a fan of Jordan Peterson, but I know that he gets a lot of flack because he says something about like one of his philosophies is the best way to have a successful life is to start by cleaning your room or something like that. He's not the only one who has said that. Um, and I think there's there is something to that. There is something to um, taking control over the elements of your life that you do have the most immediate control over. Like if you can't even keep your room clean, how can you go out and influence the world? So I get that philosophy, although, you know, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more to it. Um, not much else really uh to report other than um i am looking forward to this next month i have some cool things going on that i'm starting to look forward to at the end of next month i am going to be going back to los angeles and performing at the world famous magic castle um so yes so i have some exciting things going on next month um I might go out to Vegas early next week um, and meet up with a comedian friend of mine. Still kind of undecided on on that. Other than that, not not much to report today. And I do always try to have something profound, something exciting going on. But yesterday really was a day for me to relax, get my room clean. I did also... Um, do some more financial management stuff. I'm in the middle of this weird financial thing personally where I had this 30-day late payment um, on one of my credit cards because it was a new credit card and I didn't 
get the auto pay set up in time. And so next thing I know, I have this 30 day late charge on my uh, credit report and it has just turned into this absolute nightmare because of that one, that one little misstep. And so I have been like knee deep in, uh, like I hired a, uh, one of those credit repair people who is, seems really intuitive and seems to know how to play the game. And then I've also been in this hardcore debt reduction thing. I've moved so much money around. I say so much. It's we're not talking millions, a lot for me to try to get all of my like credit card balances lowered or, um, try to get my utilizations on individual cards lowered. So I'm trying to um, get, you know, debt from one credit card over to another credit card, you know, kind of balance it out so that like not one credit card has really high balances. And so I have been doing a lot of work on that. And, you know, even when you're going for a dream, there's still life. Life is still coming at you. There's still bills to pay. There's still things to get done. And and I think that that is... Um, I think the more that I can try, that, that I try to get my kind of the, the regular life... I say regular. That's probably a horrible way to phrase it. But, um, you know... The uh, j- just the regular day to day, getting the bills paid and all of that, while I'm still pursuing and looking to find a way to become um, successful within my dream within that industry. Um, the more that I try to set up my personal life so that I can pursue my dream as aggressively and consistently as possible. I'm reminded of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He had that big documentary about his life come out in Netflix. And he talked about how he he never made money as an actor initially. Um, he made money actually in real estate. So, you know, he was successful as a bodybuilder. He made some money there. But ultimately, he learned how to invest in real estate so that he didn't have to make he didn't have to make money as an actor initially because he didn't want to be desperate. He didn't want to be reliant on taking any role that he could get just to make money. I didn't want to be a character actor. I wanted to be a movie star. So I made sure that I had the money coming in from real estate. Um, and I think that's really important. I, I, I think there is this idea that you know, you got to burn your ships and you got to go all in and you have to be homeless and live in your car while you're waiting for your big break. And, you know, that didn't seem to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's strategy. Arnold Schwarzenegger's strategy was I'm going to make money in the business sector, in the real estate sector, and make sure that I have money coming in so that I can then pursue the dream, my dream the way that I want to. Um, and to get my goals that way. And that's, you know, there's, there's, there's wisdom in that. And that's sort of where I'm looking at my life now is how can I set up my life? You know, the, my financial situation, my living situation, so that I then have the freedom and flexibility to pursue my dream as a comedian, as an actor, as long as it takes. And, to be as flexible as I can be and agile and able to um, take advantage of opportunities when they come up, take advantage of, um, you know, gigs out of state, gigs out of town, acting gigs, different places. And so I think that that, that that's really important to, to really look at is How can I, how can I manage just life? Because life comes at all of us and things happen and bills need to get paid and you got to live somewhere and you got to be able to get around and you got to be able to eat. And unfortunately, 
the dream, uh, having a dream doesn't really pay the bills. Um, pursuing artistic pursuits, a little redundant, doesn't pay the bills. And for the, you know, for the Taylor Swifts in the world, that that's great that they were able to, you know, be successful since the time they were 16 or 17 and, and making millions of dollars in their art. And there's some actors that way and some comedians that way. But I mean, I don't think Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think it was around, he was around 30 before he even started getting into films. Don't quote me on that timeline, but it was a little bit later. Now, obviously he had been um, successful as a, as a bodybuilder, but, um, but that isn't really what launched him into movie stardom, which was his dream. So So learning to manage life, manage the elements of life that I have control over, getting my room clean, getting my finances squared away, getting, being responsible and all of that stuff so that when the big opportunities come and they will come, that I am in a position to take advantage of them. So That's where I'm at today. So I'll keep this one a little short today. I know you are all so disappointed. You love it when I blab on for 20 minutes, not 10. But um, I will check in with you tomorrow. Tomorrow I've got my open, or excuse me. um, Yes, I will be checking in with you tomorrow. Um, But I will, I've got my open mic later today. And I will be doing that and then potentially going to Vegas uh, to network with some comedians up there. So I'll see how all that pans out, and I will keep you updated as the Paul Green Comedy Podcast continues documenting my, my journey and my dreams. So I hope all of your dreams are going well. You are pursuing what is in your heart, what is calling to you, and you are having success and finding joy along the way. So... I love you all so much. Thank you for listening. This is March 31st. Happy Easter to all of you who that applies to. If it does not apply to you, a happy Sunday. And uh, I love you all so much. And I will talk to you tomorrow.